National boundaries cannot be preserved by barbed wire, constructed fences, or concrete. Oppressed people historically seek sanctuary from their imposed and enforced misery. Walls may not confine those who seek an alternative to bondage and a lack of opportunity. Their prison was inherited by birth, not by choice. For the oppressed that lived on the wrong side of Berlin, they awoke on the morning of August 13, 1961, to find their city abruptly divided, with no warning. Their captivity would endure for 28 years. This is a story about the aftermath of history. A wall representing tyranny ultimately crumbled. A government unelected by the people collapsed. Over a quarter of a century after the 1989 fall, we see a very different Berlin that has emerged once the barrier was lifted. The eastern sector of Berlin has ultimately benefited the most from German reunification. Their side of the wall was heavily armed, fortified, and patrolled by weaponry, dogs, and foot patrols. The west opened their arms to dissidents. Those that breached the wall, however, did so at the risk of their life. Those from the east who attempted to escape were executed or arrested, imprisoned, and tortured for their efforts. Their society was ultimately doomed, but their oppressor, with aid from the Soviet Union, made preserving the failing German Democratic Republic a priority at all costs. Today, the detested wall is represented by embedded bricks in the streets and on sidewalks tracing the original route. Berlin is no longer the identical city from over 25 years ago, particularly in the once nearly deserted and underdeveloped eastern part of the city. Multi-level office and residential constructions abound. The reason the east has fared so well? Well, the land was easily acquired and inexpensive upon the reunification. The former divisions, routes, and even streets took on a new appearance. The no man's land which fronted the wall on the east was bare and spacious, no longer. Elegant 19th century buildings that survived the World War II bombings and shrapnel damage blend in seamlessly with the contemporary glass architecture. But the reminders of the wall are everywhere. At this channel crossing, the first East Berlin escapee was shot to death, attempting to swim across. He was only 24. At least another 200 would meet his identical fate. Because the Eastern sector offered such a blank slate to work with, Berlin has become a model for contemporary architecture styling and innovation. Curiously, it is one of the few major German cities with extensive high-rise structures. The River Spree dissects the city into two. For portions, the water body formed a natural barrier. Yet imagine the torment if you are condemned to a view of the west from the east, particularly during the German economic miracle of the 1950s and 60s. The East continued to flounder and provide only excuses and unrealistic promises and projections for their bleak future. No one on the Eastern side was fooled. The city of Berlin was entirely located within East Germany, like a surrounded island. Sanctioned roadways enabled West Germans the option of heading to the Free Mainland. Easterners had no such choice. Today, only economic limitations inhibit the freedom to travel. Berlin is a city of monuments. The Brandenburg Gate 
which is a symbol of peace, appears, by contrast, to glorify armed victory. Berlin is also a city of memorials for the collective sins from past injustices. We are reminded of extreme forms of cruelty, prejudice, and hatred. They are human properties, just like those we glorify. We must never lose sight of the human capacity for duality. The locational irony is never more apparent than the Jewish Holocaust Memorial. Located only one block away from Adolf Hitler's bunker and ultimate resting place. Today, it is a barren parking lot for a residential project. One senses the abandoned past keener in the concentrated construction area of Potsdamer Platz. In 1989, when the Berlin Wall was first breached, the famed square which was an ancient gateway into Potsdam, was a desolate wasteland and literally no man's land. When I previously visited Berlin in 1996, it was a concentrated mass of construction sites and building, seemingly 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Today, it has become the clearest indication that Berlin is seeking its future and identity through commerce and not through conquering foreign territory. Continuing along the wall, we observe the modern, we observe the quirky, and a remnants of a Prussian legacy. Inherent within the German mindset for order and stability is a tradition honoring ambition, sometimes to the extent of arrogance. The German people have suffered for their historical ambitions, and through the eyes and voices of their victims, rightly so. It is impossible to entirely relinquish the past one must continue to attempt to move forward while practicing tolerance and empathy for those unable to maintain the identical pace and conviction. The consequence for arrogance and intolerance is ultimately desolation and, to some degree, ridicule for exaggerated presumptions of grandeur. Don't fool yourself. We are not speaking strictly of a buried past. These ambitions, this intolerance, still remains today. Perhaps not within the present confines of Berlin. When one pays close attention to the political rhetoric and propaganda sourced from the mouths of leaderships based in Moscow, Beijing, and yes, even sometimes Washington, D.C. We should be very concerned by the nature of this discourse and the implications that may follow. Germany overstretched their ambitions during World War II. Hitler, however, has been replicated throughout history. Another one may be in our midst, given the proper opportunity. The final frontier of undeveloped no man's land is an isolated field located in the center core of Berlin, awaiting development. Ah, within three years, it will exist no longer. Infrastructure is being prepared currently under the adjacent roadways, and the parcel is surrounded by other completed residential projects. It is an eerie feeling strolling along the desolate pathway. It could be empty space in any urban, suburban, or rural landscape. Here it retains a distinct but soon temporary significance as one walks 
on the well-trodden path, one feels only emptiness. History has altered Berlin, certainly as an aesthetic improvement. One does not sense the former menace and paranoia. The city now faces the same contemporary traumas as other urban centers. Crime, vandalism, and homelessness stalk the city equally as economic prosperity. Many souls remain left behind. St. Thomas Church on the former eastern sector is one such example. A brilliant 19th century architectural masterpiece modeled after a cathedral in Venice. It was bombed out at the conclusion of World War II and then abandoned by the East German authorities. It awaits fresh walls and renovation. The residents of the outer periphery of the former East Berlin await economic stimulus. It's coming, but not at the former lightning pace of the center core. In this outer sector, one catches a glimpse at how far behind East Germany lagged from the West. These distinctions are not evident in the renovated city center. There seems very little nostalgia for the previous decay. Its greatest attraction today is that it remains the sole rental market that may still be affordable by many. This convenience, however, may not be a desirable alternative. At the East Side Gallery, the longest stretch of remaining intact wall remains. Most of it is painted over by murals and graffiti. Artists from all over the world spray paint their messages. But very likely, not for permanence sake. We cross the Spree River back into West Berlin via the ancient Oberbaum Bridge. Our walk is concluded. History resumes its course.